Coming up, the New York football giants conclude their draft. Picking up, yes, a tight end that we told you all about in Theo Johnson, a surprising running back, and also some help inside of the linebacker core. We break down back end of the draft and overall what Big Blue accomplished coming up next. Ah, yes, my friends, it's OGP, the One Giant Podcast, where you know that we are your hosts over here, Adam Marbeck over there, Andrew Makowitz. We're healthy, we're wealthy, we're wise. Some of us are in the studio putting in the work after the draft, and then there's other people who immediately fly away on vacations and have to come to us via satellite connection. Listen, Adam, some of us have to travel for work. Some of us you know, have to travel for, for pleasure. It's neither here nor there. Just know that yeah. I'm committed. I listen, listen, I even brought my microphone down with me, Adam. So I am just hey. as committed as you on this one, ready to round out the 2024 NFL draft for the New York Giants. You better believe it, man. Listen, it was a good one. Obviously, if you didn't catch any of the breakdowns, we had our full coverage. We're doing live episodes uh, over the course of Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, talking about different players. But then over on the podcast feed, you can get individual ones on Tyler Newbin. You can get an individual clip out there on Andrew Phillips as well. So go check those out if you missed anything. But the way the Giants concluded this draft, starting in the fourth round on the final day, was with a player that we thought they were going to. I was a little bit surprised with the way some people reacted to Theo Johnson. We understand he's not a, a high-profile tight end in terms of production at the college level, but when you go to all the measurables, specifically the RAS score, as oh, and he likes some of these numbers, you, you see a player that basically I think we're going to look back on and say, oh, right, not, not this high-profile guy coming out, but especially with tight ends, I feel like their journey and their careers are usually far more written when you get to the college level. We love the Theo Johnson pick at 107. Yeah, we, we do. I mean, we did a whole piece on Theo Johnson. We mentioned him as one of the three likely guys to be selected in the, in the final rounds of, of the NFL draft. Um, Adam, you're right. It, there's something about the tight end position where it feels like you can get by on raw athleticism or just being like a freak athlete more than any other position in, in in the game. And you can kind of learn on the job. You look at guys that played basketball like a Jimmy Graham. You look at Antonio Gates. Like, they pick up football later on in their life, and they're still able to have Hall of Fame-type careers, which is remarkable. You, you don't hear that for, like, quarterbacks, like guy playing basketball for a while, and then, like, his junior year, he's like, I'm just going to be the QB of, of the Florida Gators. Like, that doesn't happen because th there's just so much more nuance to the game at that level. At, at the tight end group, it's like either block the guy in front of you or like run eight to 10 yards and get yourself open. And he's like, I guess I could do right. that. Like that seems pretty easy for me. But, you know, aside aside from that, like philosophical piece about tight ends, Theo yeah. Johnson is a really interesting one. We know Daniel Bellinger is a, a capable and willing blocker. We know that he is going to be around in in short spurts. We've seen him be a good pass catcher with Darren Waller's uncertainty and most people thinking that he's likely to retire. The Giants did need an athletic type of weapon that is kind of a big frame, big body, explosive um, potential to complement what Bellinger can do in the tight end room for the Giants. Hundred percent, yeah, and like, and and what, what, whatever this indicates about Darren Waller, as you mentioned, we don't know. He still has not officially announced anything. It would seem to me, that if you're the New York Football Giants, if if you feel more confident that Darren Waller is going to play. You might go a different direction at 107, not because Theo Johnson isn't worth the pick, but you have other needs on the team. If you think you're getting Darren Waller, and you mentioned you have Daniel Bellinger, you brought in some other more inline uh, tight ends that can do a little bit more blocking for you. Why spend that capital there? There's offensive linemen that went right behind Theo Johnson in uh, BB that we really like. So there's other ways you would have gone here. So it feels like you, you want to have this replacement in place. And historically for the Giants, you can go back. Like having that athletic tight end weapon, I mean, you want to go all the way back to the Jeremy Shockey days, it, it, it really helps this offense kind of move. And when you go back to the first round, you know they got Malik Neighbor. You, you're sitting here with Wandell Robinson, with Jalen Hyatt. That core, that feels like you got this young wide receiver core ready to go. But you need consistency. We love Daniel Bellinger. Love the massive muscle photo from last offseason. Bottom line is, I think that he is a capable receiver out of the tight end position. I think he does a solid job blocking as well. He has speed. But last year, when you go and get Darren Waller, 
I think that that was kind of the wake up call on, on where is Daniel Bellinger and his overall development and the overall expectations of what he can be for the position. So this makes a nice compliment to me. I think having having a guy like Theo Johnson in the room is great. And now you just sit, wait, see here, because this is a little bit beyond. We're a little beyond the draft. But if Darren Waller chooses to retire, I mean, you're talking about coming in day one and saying, Theo Johnson, when we need a player out of that position, it's going to be you that we look for because it's not like you have a lot of other options. Although I will say, too, you know, you that that collection of players in the tight end room there are still names that can come out of there, including Lawrence Cager, who came back to the Giants as well. So I don't know, 63 tight ends. You assume somebody can make some plays for Big Blue. Yeah, and, and you know, we've seen Daniel Bellinger be a starter for the Giants. We've seen right. him be productive. The Giants couldn't get their wide receiver one, and they went the avenue of getting a really explosive tight end when healthy in Darren Waller. Obviously, that hasn't really worked out. I could see a scenario where Dan, Daniel Bellinger starts. Maybe they even bring a, a veteran free agent type, like a Logan Thomas type of, of, of tight end mm-hmm. in, into camp to see what, what they have. But I think but the question for me, Adam, is – are you okay with the Giants tight end room if Darren Waller does retire, knowing that it is going to be Daniel Bellinger as a likely week one starter and Theo Johnson trying to get up to speed and maybe uh, as a situational threat? Yeah, I think so. I mean, listen, remember, prior to getting Darren Waller, we, we liked Daniel Bellinger and we thought he had we thought he had a really nice rookie year. Now he had the injury, obviously, with the eye, and he had to come back from that. When you look at the way that he was projected versus where the Giants ended up. You know, I think were you and I surprised they went and got Darren Waller at the time? No, not it's not surprised, but it was like, oh, okay, that's a little bit of a shift here because you just drafted Daniel Bellinger and we liked what he did his first season. So if you tell me Darren Waller is gone, I'm going to go right back to Daniel Bellinger and say, okay, we remember those routes that he was running, those little out routes, getting up the field on the outside. Daniel Jones was hitting him in stride, getting some touchdown catches in there, and that's I think why you brought in some of these other inline tight ends to do some of the blocking. So that maybe while you want Daniel Bellinger can, to continue to develop in that vein, we want to be able to use him more as he has speed. Remember, he has he has quality speed. Uh, Theo Johnson's running a four five seven out of the tight end position, so we want to be able to use these guys as weapons as much as possible, and that's as much the reason why you go and help fix the offensive line in the off season too. So yeah, I'm fine with him, man. I, I I've already said this. It's not a knock on Darren Waller. It's not an examination of his personal life. If he if he's uncertain and you're not sure if you're going to play or not, that's totally fine. At that, at a certain point, you just want to move on because you need that you have dedicated bodies in there and not the question marks. And we'll talk more about that certainly as we work our way through the off season. Coming up here next, Tyrone Tracy Jr. Everybody had him on the Giants draft board. We'll talk about not maybe taking a running back a little bit sooner in the draft. Why I should have, we should have seen that being the case. But ultimately, what does Tyrone Tracy Jr. bring? And a trend here for Big Blue picking up players that have explosive character traits to their game as the Giants try to find some home run hitters as we work our way through the latter stages of the draft. We'll get into that in just one moment. Okay, Andrew, this Tyrone Tracy Jr. discussion. We brought to you by Pytential, P-I-E-T-E-N-T-I-L. By Pytential is a free for individual user online assessment tool. It basically helps you set benchmarks, gives you opportunities and tools to improve tracks your progress along the way all around your well-being. Whether you are entering your pro career as Tyrone Tracy Jr. is hoping to with the New York football Giants and wanting to be explosive and dynamic, it doesn't mean you don't have questions, concerns, and maybe a little bit of doubt. So get over to Potential today and start to get your well-being on track. Tyrone Tracy Jr. got himself on track to be an NFL player by switching from wide receiver over to running back. This is told by a coach. Nothing better, I think. Nothing more encouraging as a college athlete than having a coach come to you as you're playing wide receiver and say, hey, buddy, let's take a knee here for one second. You're going to want to change positions. This is this is not going to be the path for you. Gets told to go be a running back, and you will make the NFL. Tyrone Tracy does that. He makes the NFL. He's the Giants pick, 166. How do you feel about this player? Let's break him down a little bit. Yeah, so I'll... I'll... I'll start with And obviously the, you knew everything about him coming in. Like just to be clear, you knew oh, everything yeah, of course. about this kid coming in. Of of all the running backs in the top 12 that were potentially going to go, I think I I probably pre hearing his name announced by the Giants did the least on Tyrone Tracy. So at first glance <laughs> I was like, "Huh? Who? What?" I, I, so before we get into to Tyrone Tracy, the the player and and what the Giants are going to be getting, I yeah. do believe that because the Giants made the decision to take Theo Johnson, there was a massive run on running backs 
And we and we pointed out the idea of picking at 107 and then having to wait till 166 just puts you yeah, yeah. in no man's land where you know that you get the player that you really want at 107, but you have no control unless you add more draft capital into the mix to get one of the guys you want. So mm-hmm. estimate Jalen Wright, a whole host of running backs came off the board between when the Giants picked Theo Johnson and when they picked Tyrone Tracy. So it's, to, it's one of those like, where did the Giants actually have Tyrone Tracy on the board? I don't know if we're ever going to get that answer. But sure. to your point, Tyrone Tracy is a New York Giant. What are the Giants getting from him? You mentioned started his career at Iowa, You know, has moved back and forth between wide receiver and running back. They just want to get the ball into his hands because he is a really good playmaker. Um, he, he has unbelievable athleticism in short spaces. I think he was number one in college football in um, – yard percentage after contact. So like he still mm-hmm. finds a way to pick up yards when, even when things aren't going right. Now, a lot of that has to do with him maybe not being as patient of a runner or not picking the right holes because I don't know, Adam, he spent his whole career outside being a wide receiver as opposed to behind the line of scrimmage and behind the the, the quarterback. So it feels right. like this is an interesting pick for Joe Shane. It feels like it also probably has a special team lens in mind, Adam, but I'm not upset with it. Based on wanting to get Theo Johnson, it felt like you wanted to address the running back position. And if you had done your homework and said, hey, we could work with this guy in a multitude of ways, then Tyrone Tracy seems to fit and complement the rest of the running back room. Yeah, for sure. 618 uh, grade over on NFL.com in terms of prospect. That gives him good backup potential to develop into a starter. So, I mean, if we're talking about picking in the fifth round of the NFL draft, right, I, that that feels like great value. You mentioned special teams, something that we've talked about. And we've heard Joe Shane mention a lot over the course of leading up to and getting into the draft. OK, 448 speed. You mentioned, you know, it's funny. He's 5'11", 209. So it, it, to, I, to go and watch some of his tape. After he was drafted, obviously, let's be totally clear here. You see, like, he looks small. It looks kind of like his his legs seem like he has like you know a shorter leg span. There's those little choppy steps and running through there. But then to your point, it wouldn't look like he would be able to absorb contact. And then you just see him kind of bounce off of tacklers and really maintain a nice pad level, nice balance. And you say there a bit of a home run opportunity here. Some of the things I went and watched a couple other people that broke him down after the draft too. Talking about how if you go and look at him running behind not a great offensive line or at Iowa, not really an offensively driven team, a lot of his work is lateral move. So you'd say, well, you want this guy to be north and south. But is that by design or is it because you need to do that to try to find some holes here? So you try to look at some of these little clips. Okay, is there something here for the Giants? You mentioned getting him into the running back room. My, my question is just. And I don't want to get too far afield here because we'll do this again. We'll break down the roster overall. I, I want to go back over the course of this week and talk about what would you have done different? You mentioned waiting all the way to 166. So while we have Theo Johnson, should they have done X, maybe running back, so they could have looked at something different when it came down the line to close out the draft. But you bring in Devin Singletary, Eric Gray, now Tyrone Tracy Jr., you still have players like Gary Brightwell. You brought in Miller. You, you, the, the laundry list of players inside of this wing back room is just interesting to me. And it feels like in some ways, and it's fine at 166, the Giants basically brought in Devin Singletary, and then they said, let's fire shots here. Let's, let's fire shots pre-draft. Let's get a guy in the draft. Yes, he's older. Who cares? All of these bodies, let's just see who can bubble up. I wonder if they're going to – I wonder how many running backs they'll carry. Because at a certain point, it kind of feels like, okay, we know what Singletary is. And then game to game, down in distance, Gray, let's see what you got. Tyrone Tracy, let's see what you got. I I think they're just going to throw bodies in there because the skill sets for these players are also very much on a spectrum. So we'll see how Tracy plays himself out. I can't, like you say, can't overstate that I knew exactly what was going on. And this is deep cut running back territory. It, It wasn't. But. I'm fascinated to see what he looks like when we get to him because otherwise I can see the other side of this coin where a year from now we're talking about a 24 now 25 year old running back that did, never really had a play on the roster didn't quite fit and did they waste maybe a pick here and I'm not I'm not, I'm not trying to negative it's just it's a wait and see for me I don't think there's enough here to really get excited or excited about Tracy. Well, you mentioned he's also a little bit older, so he's 24 years old. So he's he's been uh, around for a while. He's actually basically the same age as Eric Gray, the, the running the running back f- uh, sure. for the Giants, already on the roster. I, you know, Adam, it, I think philosophically the Giants said, 
either we're going to spend a lot of capital on the running back position and re-sign Saquon Barkley, or we're going to sure. throw a bunch of darts at the wall and see which one ends yep. up sticking, right? Like it, it does feel like they went that route and they just said, we can't allocate that much funds to it. You know, the, it was a low cost, high upside signing of Dante Miller in the off season. Remember Adam four, two, seven, 40 at his pro day. Even if that's yep. inflated, listen, he can, he can run very, very fast, whether it's, you know, if the combine would have been a four, three, five or whatever it may be like, that is still elite speed at the position. I, I, I'm, I'm going to say this now because it, it's a pretty big question mark with Don, with Dante Miller and Tyrone Tracy and Tyrone Tracy's ability in special teams and Dante Miller's just crazy breakaway speed. I'm curious if Eric Gray and Gary Brightwell are going to end up making the roster for the Giants because as of right now, Eric Gray doesn't have special teams potential. In fact, it was a disaster and he got hurt trying to, to leverage special teams. So unless in Eric fact, Gray, the Giants tried to force him to do that in spite of not having any experience with it. Yeah. <laughs> And so, like, we've seen that act. It doesn't really work. And so I, I yeah. think this this could be an omission that, like, we're not confident that Eric Gray can be the complimentary guy that we hoped. Spending a mid-round pick on him last season, they, yeah. they – listen, I know they didn't spend a lot of draft capital. They didn't spend any with Dante Miller. This is a sixth, you know, fifth or sixth-round pick for uh, Tyrone Tracy. But to me, it feels like Gary Brightwell is definitely on the outside looking in right now, unless he has that special teams value. I'm circling Eric Gray as someone that we're going to have to look out. He has to have a great camp, I think, to really carve out a role on this team. Yeah, fifth, uh, fifth round, 172 last year for uh, Eric Gray. So, hey, and again, that's why it's okay. Like, it doesn't, you know... Well, I won't put it that way. On the one hand, it's okay because these mid to late round picks, you're going to take shots on players and see if they pan out. What does become interesting, I think you make a really good point, is okay, well, now you've taken a lot of shots, and are they going to work out? And ironically, Gary Brightwell, who's the, one of the last, we'll talk about this this offseason too, a lot of holdovers from the Gettleman administration are falling by the wayside, you know, week over week, year over year for the New York Giants. Gary Brightwell just keeps hanging on. And sometimes when you see him get opportunities, you're like, oh, yeah, Gary Brightwell. Like, this guy, he's got a little something. So fun to just watch how it plays out. It's good. This will be a really fun camp for the running back room, to your point. You're going to find somebody, hopefully, bodies that rise up. Corbin was also brought back to this team. I don't know. The Giants seem to be struggling to find out where they want to go here. Looks like they tried to get ahead of losing Saquon Barkley last season. To your point, Eric Gray, is that going to pan out or not? We'll see soon enough. Coming up next. One more pick to close out the draft for the New York football giants in the sixth round. Darius Muasau. What do we say about the linebacker? And then what do we feel about the draft overall? How do we think the giants and Joe Shane handled trying to improve this team? And look ahead to the 2024 season. We'll get into that in just one moment. Oh, Andy, as excited as we were about Theo Johnson, we got a, one of our guys at the top 30 visit. You talk about Andrew Phillips also. So there's names that we believe the Giants were going to bring into this team, and we loved it. And then Tyrone Tracy Jr. happened, and we said, I'll just Google him real fast. Darius Muisau, I, I, I name aware of, yes. Thought likely the Giants were taking him, no. What are your thoughts on Darius Musau? Six foot, 225, UCLA product. Just taken there, obviously, in the sixth round. Big, uh, big time, a stat compiler in terms of leading the team in tackles the past two seasons, and obviously led Hawaii in each of his previous two seasons. That's where he provided his hello, big blue, happy to be a part of the Giants. He's there in Hawaii, so coming over officially stateside. We know it's a part of it. Uh, what would you feel about him here with his size, skill set? Yeah, at first I was kind of like trying to understand the pick. W do we need linebacker help? Um, this to me screams like a Carter Coughlin type of player where it's like, come in, cut your teeth in special teams. If we need you in a pinch to, to maybe develop into a rotational linebacker, like that's where it's at from, from mm. everything I hear. Great player. O always like, you know, that he talks about how he's relentless in film study, making sure he understands what's going on. I, uh, the giants ended up with the last few picks, Joe Shane even admitted relying very heavily on interactions from the coaching staff, you know, knowing that Tyrone Tracy was at the senior bowl and Shea Tierney got, got a look at him, you know, Michael Gobriel, uh, and was a uh, coach at the university of Hawaii coached, uh, uh, Muasau there. And so there's all this familiarity. So I think that what the giants decided to do is they said, we know these players, we know exactly what we're getting from these late round picks. 
they can, you know, we don't have to worry about some of the peripheral things. So like, this is where our, our focus is going to be. I, I, it sounds like it'll be a little bit of an uphill battle for Moose out to, to make the roster, but really yeah. he's going to get in there, compete, have special teams value, be able to play a complimentary role in that linebacker room. My expectations are not sky high, but it sounds like he's a great, great guy and great kid. And we want him in there competing. Yeah, I, you, you talk about the four seven speed. I think that's going to be the uphill battle for him. Six foot two five at the top there. You're you're going to struggle, right? Because you're not saying, well, a little bit of underneath coverage. I mean, yeah, in the short areas, maybe around the line of scrimmage, but athletic tight ends. It's not like we're talking about him picking him up. So the size measurable combination is a little bit interesting. Special teams will be fun to see if he can carve out a role for himself. And by the way, like that, that's okay too. Some of these back end ones, like Tyrone Tracy Jr. as well. Hey, if you're two players that come in and we look at some teams, all of a sudden you nip at the heels, a couple of guys. Remember, Cam Cam Brown is no longer a part of this team. These aren't like for like replacements, but he was kind of making his you know name on special teams as he worked through the Joe Shane era. So, okay, come in, get value, improve the special teams group. Like those things matter as well. I don't love saying it in the fifth round but I'm fine saying it in the sixth round. So we'll see how he ends up playing himself out as we get in there. There's a whole, as we move along, <laughs> I'm not even going to go through, you know, they brought another tight end in Knox. They brought in an inside linebacker, inside offensive lineman, excuse me, in Barnard. Brought in Christian Roland Wallace, the cornerback, another like the offense, all kinds of players, man. Dozens, like, and I mean, a dozen guys that were brought here in terms of unfree. We'll talk about those guys this week. Let's just say six rounds. The Giants have made all their picks. You get Malik Neighbors, you get Newbin, you get Phillips, you go ahead and you get Johnson, Tracy, and Muasau. How do you feel about what the Giants did? And ultimately, let's cut it off at the fourth round, right? Top four picks. How do you feel about what the Giants accomplished? Yeah, so I give the I give the Joe Shane regime. Uh, if, I, if I had to say, I would say a solid B uh, overall okay. in the draft grade. B maybe sure. trending towards a B plus. Listen, I I don't want to be. I want to be unbiased. I don't, I want to be more neutral. Like obviously these players are New York giants and I want to cheer for them and, and cheer them on as much as possible. Malik neighbors at the top, you're getting a top three or four athlete in the entire draft at the sixth spot in an area of need. So you kind of got a two for one there. I love it. It, I love to, I, I love Tyler Newbin in terms of the safety room. It does feel like the board didn't necessarily break the way the giants wanted to. And like, while. Yeah unless you were to able able to pump Joe Shane full of truth serum, you're going to get that Tyler yeah, Newman was the guy that they were targeting in the second round. Anyway, I kind of think yeah. that there were other guys in other areas, specifically a corner that they wanted to address. And then I'm, in the I'm third, surprised by the way, quickly surprised. Yeah. You know, Tyler Newman wasn't on the top 30 visits. So if we're talking about guys that you meet with and the way the giants have operated in the draft under Joe Shane, it, it's easy to kind of pull that little thread about, well, the, I mean, he might be a great player. You might like him. But everyone you expect them to pick in the first three rounds, you assume they would have probably had their hands on. Yeah, it, well, exactly. And and so it's no knock on Tyler Newbin. He is a ball hawk. No. It is a great addition to the room. I just think the, the board met maybe didn't allow them to take the best player available that they were hoping for at that position. Been, uh, Daniel Jeremiah and others had him as a top 50-55 type player. We The Giants end up selecting him with the 70th pick. Some people say he's still raw and he he needs to learn a little bit more. So overall, like, you know, the problem that we have and the reason why it's a B is while Phillips is a great player and he's going to contribute, there's still a huge question at the outside cornerback position outside of Deontay Banks. Yeah. We're, we're just saying by default right now, Cordell Flott is going to be the guy that gets the first crack at it. And when they're using terms like first crack at trying to be an outside cornerback, that concerns me, Adam. And, you know, there's still a little bit of offseason left, and I, I want to get your feedback too. But knowing Darren mm -hmm. Waller might retire, knowing that there's maybe a few million extra dollars in cap space that Giants could have, maybe they use that on, on a $2 million veteran cornerback that you say, well, he's not great, but at least he can you know hold down the fort until we get some something more long-term there. But that's my – maybe maybe I'm a little harsher than everyone else, but I give it a B, maybe a, a B plus. I, I, I see a lot of people saying an A. Adam, where do, where's your head at when we talk about the first few picks for the Giants? Yeah, I mean, I, I, we, we, I, I always get excited about these guys, right? When you draft a player, I'm like, here we go. You know, to, you know, Theo Johnson is going to be electric. He's going to be catching 45 balls this year. He's going to be the red zone threat. Darren Waller, happy trails. You can retire and all that stuff, right? 
But I, I, I'm, I'm closer to you. Like, I think a B that makes sense here. And mostly some of it is out of their control. As you say, the board doesn't quite break for you. So you have to make a bit of a pivot decision. If you think about Tyler Newbin, I mean, it, it's excellent. But then I go and I look when you brought in Jalen Mills, and this kind of ties into your conversation around cornerback and Cordell Flott. Well, Dane Belton has been here and we like him and we're waiting for him to fully get there to show you something. So you go and you get a Jalen Mills just to make sure, just to put another veteran body in the room and say, Dane Belton, let, let's come on. Let, let's get you over that hump. Let's have you earn that job. I think likewise, Cordell Flott. Okay, we do like you. We drafted. We think you can play on the outside. We think Phillips can play a little bit on the outside, though. We love him at the inside covering the slot. Okay, let's go get a veteran cornerback on, on the free agent market. Not because they're going to come in and be this anchoring stalwart, but because we need to know that we have something here without without acknowledging we didn't like everything addressed we wanted to we didn't get everything addressed we wanted to so on an individual level i like the players i think you look at cornerback obviously i think it's look at like the linebacker room and you know wonder a little bit a lot's going to come down to if darian beavers is healthy and what he looks like and then defensive line you know i'll still say that they you know you looked at some players there we heard a little bit during the draft i still think you'd like to bring in a depth piece there as well so the majority of my concerns, not concerns, but areas that I'll watch are going to be defensively. You improve this defensive unit for sure, but there's still holes there that really are going to be damaging and could take away from the incredible value that is Deontay Banks, right? Now, all of a sudden, you go, well, I'll pick on the other guy, and, and that's going to be an interesting thing to watch there. Offensively, I, I think the other thing we learned here is just that you sign the players in the offseason for the line. Maybe you want to keep an eye on offensive linemen throughout the draft, but you invested in it. The, you know, it's two sides of the coin. On the one side of the coin, you want to address an area of need and a problem you have to solve. And then the other side of that is when you draft offensive linemen, you've been pretty bad at it. And none of them have really come to fruition. So we'll talk about who's playing guard this team. How are you going to construct it? So it it just it gets me back into the roster, right? You come out of the draft and you meet, look back at it. So that, I, I think I'm on par with you, man. I think it'd be great. It's solid. It's not, not showing off, not falling behind. But there's still going to be things if we want to do totality that I need to see them do here, right? Show me some things with the free agency market to help improve this team a little bit. And then we'll be talking about a team that I think took a nice step forward. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. I, you know, it's interesting. A lot of people want to lump in like all the, all the off season stuff into one thing. It's like, well, they traded oh. Brian Burns and, and, and yeah, so they, yeah. he's part of this draft class and Dante Miller signed as a free agent. So he's part of this draft class. It's like, no, He's part of the off season. They're part of the off season reshaping the roster. But like, you, it, it's not about like, oh, if we would have had that pick, we would have gotten this guy. It's like, well, the whole board would have been different for the Giants. Like, sure, whatever picks you have, what did you do with them, and how do we think they complement the roster that you have currently? Like, I, I know that you probably feel the same as me, right? Oh yeah, and I there's a couple people over on X that were talking about this. It's not a knock on anybody, but they were doing that, saying, "Well, you know, just as a reminder, when you came in the draft, you, you know, they got Brian Burns." And I said, "Yeah, they totally they got Brian Burns." There are trades in the off season. There are free agents you sign in the off season, and there's the draft class you have in the off season. It all comes together to give you this total picture. But I, I didn't understand because to me that felt more like, "Hey, not so impressed by the draft class." Let me remind you, we went and got Brian Burns. Like, well, of course you did, and. It, and you paid him $30 million too. So, you know, I just, I don't know why, I don't know why it amped me up a little bit, but I was like, we don't need to do this. We don't need to lump this. It doesn't need to be like, oh, caveat this draft class. The picks are the picks. The signings are the signings. The trades are the trades. I, I, yeah, I, I couldn't figure that out. They mentioned Isaiah, I, uh, you know, uh, Isaiah Simmons as well. Remember, they traded for him last year. Yeah, guess what? They did trade a pick for him. And then he was a free agent and they did, chose to sign him back. Like, so I, how we going three years back? Remember, 17 years ago, they made a choice around Eli Manning at the top of the draft class with the San Diego Chargers. Like, I just, I don't know. Yeah. I, I, I saw that it got you wound up and I wanted to bring it up. It's like, it's yeah. like basically like the remember <laughs> Bryce, Bryce Ford Wheaton, red shirt season due to injury. If he was coming out in this draft, Adam, fourth round pick, boom, add yeah. another fourth round pick to the, uh, to the draft. Uh, Darian Beavers, you know, supposed to be healthy this year. So that's like adding a mid round linebacker. Like, yeah, you can do that to the nth degree. It's just not the way that it works. And again, I had some good conversations where people explained it as, hey, it's just a part of what you discuss in the offseason. Totally. But just, just stop short of saying it's like they drafted a linebacker, uh, a Pro Bowl linebacker in the second round because they signed Brian Burns. Yeah, and and at the end of the day, Adam, if you're going to do that, you also have to do the other side of things too. Like, didn't the Giants trade a third-round pick for Darren Waller? Like, 
So Very if he's point. retiring, didn't we just lose a third round pick? So like, are these late round picks that you're talking about for Isaiah Simmons, even making up for the argument that you're making? Like, I don't even understand where we're going with all this. It, yeah. I think yeah. at the end of the day, it feels like people are excited. They want this to seem like the draft was an even better haul for the giants than maybe mm -hmm. what was originally appeared. But listen, this is the full off season, whether it's trades, free agency. There's a whole host of ways that you can get better. The Giants have done all on the spectrum. I think what we're going to find out is what are the veterans that are still sitting out there that maybe we can come in on a, on just above a veteran minimum deal. Now that you have the core of your roster addressed, I could yeah. see a world and we'll probably talk about it this week. If the Gi if Darren Waller does retire and you have a couple million to be able to put towards this roster, are you looking for a swing tackle at $5 million? Or are you thinking mm -hmm. two or three players above the veteran minimum that we still have areas of need in? You better believe it, man. Like I said at the top, you can get over to the podcast feed where everything's been broken down by player in terms of the, the picks that were made here. We'll do the same thing with Theo Johnson, with Tyrone Tracy, and with Darius uh, Muasau as well. If you want to check it out that way on X, you get us at AMAC214, at Adam Armacht, and at One Giant Podcast. Had a lot of fun breaking this down in a way. Everybody on the lives we did over the course of the weekend, all in the morning, morning sessions for OGP Faithful. I loved it. So really a lot of fun there. We will see what the Giants end up doing. I will say Levi also didn't sign somewhere else by this point is the perfect player to bring in who has starter experience for the outside cornerback position. Plant my flag. There we go. We will come back in all this week, continue to break down the draft, the off season in totality for Big Blue and see how this team approaches trying to stay competitive in an NFC East division and conference that certainly looks like it is trending in a very hard road direction. We're talking about making playoffs, dare we say. Next time, as Andrew Makowitz would want, need, and name demand the people know. As always, let's go big blue.